I think that the underlying forces that uh, took shape uh, after the 9-11 attacks uh, were present in a serious form previously. And I think the underlying forces that I would identify include uh, the geopolitics of energy in a situation where there's a perceived increasing shortage of oil supplies given rising demand, uh, especially resulting from the rapid growth of China and India. And then I would also uh, emphasize uh, in particularly the Islamic world, the continuing instability regionally that flows from the unresolved Israel-Palestine conflict, and particularly the relevance of Isra Israel's acquisition of nuclear weapons as a challenge to the other countries in the region to acquire some form of security that neutralizes Israel's military advantages. I don't think one would have had the kind of confrontation in either Iraq or now in Iran without this prior set of circumstances. So what I'm really saying is that maybe there's a tendency to exaggerate the significance of the 9-11 attacks, that these forces were pre-existing and would have produced many of the characteristics that we see in the world uh, today. And what the 9-11 attacks did, above all else, was to provide the Bush administration with a political and to some extent a legal pretext for pursuing a set of policies that it was uh, fa it favored in any event beforehand. If one reads the Project for a New American Century uh, document, Repairing America's Defenses, written uh, months before uh, Bush came to the White House, you'll see that the outline of the policy that has been pursued since 9-11 was already prefigured in that document where it said that the one thing lacking was a political climate that would allow this more aggressive milita military uh, policy to be pursued and what uh, the 9-11 attacks provided was what the report called a new Pearl Harbor which gave the uh, administration the capacity to mobilize American public opinion to support a uh, militarist foreign policy. Right. Uh sounds like the, the more things change, the, the, the more they remain the same. So you, you sense that there is a continuity, at, at least in, in the main geopolitical forces that have been operating in the world in the last 20, 30 years. And basically the, the latest developments following the terrorist attacks of September 11th simply gave a pretext to the U.S. to attempt a more militaristic uh, projection of its power? Is this... Do I understand uh, you correctly? It, uh, y yes. I th I th as I say, I think what is somewhat new as far as our political consciousness is concerned is the deepening crisis over uh, how to acquire affordable oil to keep the uh, economies of the world uh, moving ahead in a stable manner. 
and that this crisis is going to get worse, in my view, uh, because there are limited uh, oil reserves, there are no new oil uh, deposits of any great significance being discovered, and there's a rising demand. So this creates something that will affect all parts of the world in a very serious way. I think there was no, all along, U.S. foreign policy since the end of World War II has been influenced by the importance of keeping friendly control over the Gulf region. So that, that situation, I think, is uh, a stable one. But what the 9-11 attacks uh, did was to mobilize, at least temporarily, uh, the, uh, the United States, the American people, to support a policy that was not really directed so much at terrorism as it was at uh, consolidating the dominance of the United States in the aftermath of the Cold War. Uh, the, especially the war in Iraq was undertaken despite the realization that it would probably uh, adversely affect the effort to contain the terrorist threat, but that it was important because the, mid the control of the Middle East would determine the next phase of global history as well as uh, protect uh, uh, control over the oil reserves and uh, reinforce Israeli security. But it was not about terrorism. That's the important, I think, uh, argument that I would uh, support. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we will have the opportunity to raise the series of questions about the Iraqi conflict in particular, but would I be correct to deduce from what you have just said that we are still in the midst of an American-centered unipolar order? Uh, yes, it, it's, a, it's an American-centered unipolar world, but at the same time it's, a, it's a, an America that is increasingly vulnerable, economically vulnerable because of its deficit and uh, uh, fiscal uh, debt. Uh, it's uh, vulnerable to uh, additional attacks of the 9-11 variety and it's politically vulnerable because of uh, intense internal conflicts and divisions that seem to be likely to persist, uh, whatever the outcome in Iraq may be. Do the old paradigms in, in international relations, the, the classic divide between realism and idealism, do they still apply in, in an effort to, to understand, comprehend and explain the contemporary global political and economic structure? Uh, yes, I think in some ways uh, it, most people have viewed the Bush leadership as essentially visionary, uh, departing from the mainstream realism of earlier presidents and, and seeing the uh, future in terms of good and evil and in ways that are not subject to uh, calculations of national interest. And that is different than the traditional idealist view that was uh, associated with trying to promote global reforms and make changes in the world so that it would be a more peaceful and more uh, equitable way of relating the nations and peoples of the world. And the realists who are now making a, something of a comeback because of the failures of the Bush foreign policy are those that basically uh, argue that one should act in terms of national interest in a selfish way and that one should uh, be uh, very sensitive 
to whether the means uh, used are proportional to the goals pursued and that one should not undertake uh, missions in foreign affairs that uh, uh, whose costs and risks are higher than their values to the national interests. And it is that uh, realist view that had been dominant in American foreign policy at least since 1940 uh, that had been displaced by the Bush leadership and is now uh, seen as a more practical foundation for future American behavior in the world. 